Welcome back to America Decides. President Biden went on the airwaves to advocate for the vice president. That's no real surprise. He was asked, this is kind of interesting, what advice he gave her. Be herself. Mm -hmm. Look, she is smart as hell, number one. Yeah. She's tough. She was a first-rate prosecutor. She is a United States senator of significant consequence. And as vice president, there wasn't a single thing that I did that she couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to delegate her responsibility on everything from foreign policy to domestic policy. We're bringing our political panel, Nancy Cook and Sabrina Rodriguez. Nancy is a senior national political correspondent for Bloomberg News. Sabrina is a national politics reporter for The Washington Post. So we just brought our audience brand new numbers from Georgia. We have brand new sound from the vice president in an interview that she did earlier today with Stephanie Rule at MSNBC. They released one clip about that from that interview. It's about tariffs. Let's take a little look at that. Tariffs aren't unique to President Trump. President Biden has tariffs in place. He's actually looking to potentially implement more. Where do you come out on? Is there a good tariff, a bad tariff? I, well, part of it is you don't just throw around the idea of just tariffs across the board, and that's part of the problem with Donald Trump. I, frankly, I, I'm going to, and I say this in all sincerity, I, he's just not very serious about how he thinks about some of these issues. So. Your reaction, Nancy Cook, you have a kind of an expertise built out over a career in the economic sphere and politics. Economics, we all know, will be a big part of this. Democrats are asking, urging the vice president to sharpen her economic message, get more specific, get more, lean into it a little bit more. This is part of that conversation, clearly. Yeah, I mean, she didn't really answer the question. Um, and she, she certainly, and, and the Biden administration, to be fair, has kept the Trump tariffs in place and even doubled down on some of them. And so what I've seen her doing is she didn't answer the question. What she did was instead attack Trump. And, and that's what we saw with her doing in the debate as well. She said that he wasn't serious, sort of called into question his temperament and character. And that has really been her MO in this presidential race. Instead of sort of trying to make as much of a policy contrast, particularly on economic issues. She has been going after him personally, after his, you know, felony convictions, after his behavior, his temperament, and that's what we saw her do in that interview. To be fair, this afternoon, late this afternoon, her campaign did release an 86-page economic blueprint. I have not had the chance to look <laughs> through the whole thing. At all 86 pages. Some, some light bedtime reading. Right. And so I do think they are trying to sort of put a little bit more detail behind some of her economic ideas, um, just because people are demanding it. Right. But, but she also really her message is that Trump is not fit to be president and that's what she's going to keep hammering home. Sabrina this brings up an interesting point because when you talk to Trump folks as I do and I know you do all of us do at this table they will say look she doesn't answer the questions put to her and she constantly harangues former President Trump and voters still don't know who she is or what she is. Is that a strategy they can rely on going forward? I mean, it's what they've leaned on so far. And, and the reality is, when you talk to the Harris campaign folks, they'll bring up, well, does he really answer the question? Does he really get into, you know, the nuts and bolts of what exactly he would do in terms of the economy? He but the fact is, Trump is a known commodity. Harris isn't. And the polling data shows that. People are less certain about what she is or what her intentions are or what her sort of foundational principles are. Dislike or like Trump, people have a pretty good sense of those. Oh, no question about it. I mean, they're really leaning into the, she needs to be introducing herself to the American people. She needs to be showing that she takes these issues seriously. And part of her messaging on the economy has been sort of leaning into a personal appeal as well, talking about, well, I can actually provide for you because I understand you. And her talking about coming up in the middle class and really understanding, you know, workers and understanding that struggle in a way that Donald Trump doesn't. And we do see that from when she, you know, joined the race, she has improved significantly on the economy. I in mean, relationship to former President Trump, yes. Absolutely. The gap has narrowed. He's still leading, but the gap has narrowed. The gap has narrowed, which is a positive for her. And what, what her campaign is sort of saying is the more she talks about it, the better she is doing on this. And, and more so that you talk to voters and they're becoming increasingly familiar with her. But there is still that doubt because in part, I mean, Kamala Harris has a background as a politician, as a prosecutor, and Donald Trump does have this branding that has worked well for him of this businessman, this successful you know, businessman persona that can run this country like a business. And that does appeal with a lot of people. Nancy, in our Georgia data, one of the questions we asked was, have wages kept up with inflation? Mm 
Mm -hmm. Vast majority of people in Georgia said no, mm -hmm. even though statistically mm -hmm. it's somewhat close. Not that wages have overstripped and compensated in all respects for inflation, but it's much closer than people perceive. Still an advantage for Trump. Yeah, that remains really the big the big problem for Harris is that even though several markers of the economy are doing much better, you know, we saw the Federal Reserve cut interest rates last week. Um, you know, inflation is abating. Uh, people's wages have seen an increase. Unemployment remains low. People still feel bad about the economy, even if their own personal economic picture is not horrible. Um, and, and that sort of pessimistic sense of the economy has pervaded this election. And I think definitely is why the race is so close and why Trump is running so neck and neck with Harris. Sabrina, the uh, so-called vibe session, the idea <laughs> that even though you might be personally, and our data shows this, nationally, people go, I'm, I'm okay, but I'm pessimistic about the future. That's sort of the disconnect. 100%. I mean, if we all collectively had a dollar for every time we talked to someone that said, <laughs> you know, I don't like the way he speaks, but, but right? or, you know, I'm not voting for him because I think he's a great person, but... And then the answer afterwards is about the economy. Um, I mean, that is that is the number one thing that she needs to penetrate between now and Election Day, is really selling herself as, I'm a good person and I can handle the economy. And that's the challenge she has that, that really lies ahead and that Donald Trump still gets to drive home, regardless of what he says, regardless of who he offends, um, is still that perception that he understands and that he is actually going to, to improve the economy. And that path to breaking through might begin with answering the question posed to you in the first place. Nancy Cook and Sabrina <laughs> Rodriguez, that's not your problem. You do it exceptionally well. <laughs> Kamala Harris might want to think about that.